Today is the 7th of June, 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I really want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. It's Friday. We're looking forward to a weekend. I pray that you all have a blessed Sunday at church if you get a opportunity to go. But if you're joining us for the first time, let me explain. I'll put my teeth back in. I'll try again, shall we? If you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So having explained how it works, let's start today's leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. Let's pray, shall we? Now, God, whose holiness is not limited to grand cathedrals or saintly persons, spectacular mountains or mountain-moving leaders, O God, whose holiness is often discovered in simple everyday places and in simple everyday folks, plant your holiness in this time, in us now. Grow us together, that we might flower, right where we are, with the beauty of your holiness. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And today we finish the book of Judges. And Paul reminds us that we are more than conquerors. But we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us as we open up the scriptures this morning. Father, help us to move into a deeper understanding of your truth. We lay our lives down before you and ask that you would move among us. May we all feel safe, safe to think and question, safe to ask for help, and safe to share our lives with you, our loving Heavenly Father. Amen. And for the last time this week, our Bible readings are taken from the New International Version of the Bible, and we're beginning today with Judges 19. In those days, Israel had no king. Now a Levite, who lived in the remote area in the hill country of Ephraim, took a concubine from Bethlehem in Judah. 
but she was unfaithful to him. She left him and went back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judah. After she had been there four months, her husband went to her to persuade her to return. He had with him his servant and two donkeys. She took him into her parents' home. When her father saw him, he gladly welcomed him. His father-in-law, the woman's father, prevailed on him to stay, so he remained with him three days, eating and drinking and sleeping there. On the fourth day they got up early, and he prepared to leave, but the woman's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh yourself with something to eat, then you can go. So the two of them sat down to eat and drink together. Afterwards the woman's father said, Please stay tonight and enjoy yourself. And when the man got up to go, his father-in-law persuaded him, so he stayed there that night. On the morning of the fifth day, when he rose to go, the woman's father said, Refresh yourself, wait till afternoon. So the two of them ate together. Then when the man with his concubine and his servant got up to leave, his father-in-law, the woman's father, said, Now look, it's almost evening. Spend the night here. The day is nearly over. Stay and enjoy yourself. Early tomorrow morning you can get up and be on your way. But unwilling to stay another night, the man left and went towards Jebus, that is Jerusalem, with his two saddled donkeys and his concubine. When they were near Jebus and the day was almost done, the servant said to his master, Come, let us stop in the city of the Jebusites and spend the night. His master replied, No, we won't go into any city whose people are not Israelites. We'll go on to Gibeah. He added, Come, let's try to reach Gideon or Ramah and spend the night in one of these places. So they went on, and the sun set as they neared Gibeah in Benjamin. There they stopped to spend the night. They went and sat in the city square, but no one took them in for the night. That evening an old man from the hill country of Ephraim who was living in Gibeah, the inhabitants of the place were Benjamites, came in from his work in the fields. When he looked and saw the traveller in the city square, the old man asked, Where are you going? Where did you come from? He answered, We're on our way from Bethlehem and Judah to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim where I live. I have been to Bethlehem and Judah, and I am going to the house of the Lord. No one has taken me in for the night. We have both straw and fodder for our donkeys, and bread and wine for ourselves, your servants, me, the woman and the young man with us. We don't need anything. You're welcome at my house, the old man said. Let me supply whatever you need. Only don't spend the night in the square. So he took him into his house and fed his donkeys. After they had washed their feet, they had something to eat and drink. While they were enjoying themselves, some of the wicked men of the city surrounded the house. Pounding on the door, they shouted to the old man who owned the house, Bring out the man who came to your house so that we can have sex with him. The owner of the house went outside and said to them, No, my friends, don't be so vile. Since this man is my guest, don't do this outrageous thing. Look, here is my virgin daughter and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now and you can use them and do to them whatever you wish. But as for this man, don't do such an outrageous thing but the men would not listen to him. So the man took his concubine and sent her outside to them, and they raped her and abused her throughout the night, and at dawn they let her go. At daybreak, the woman went back to the house where her master was staying, fell down at the door and lay there until daylight. When her master got up in the morning and opened the door of the house and stepped out to continue on his way, there lay his concubine fallen in the doorway of the house with her hands on the threshold. He said to her, Get up, let's go. But there was no reply. Then the man put her on his donkey and set out for home. When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubine limb by limb into twelve pieces and sent them into all the areas of Israel. Everyone who saw it was saying to one another, Such a thing has never been seen or done, not since the day the Israelites came up out of Egypt. Just imagine. We must do something, so speak up. Then all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and from the land of Gilead, came together as one and assembled before the Lord at Mizpah. The leaders of all the people of the tribes of Israel took their places in the assembly of God's people, 400,000 men armed with swords. The Benjamites heard that the Israelites had gone up to Mizpah. Then the Israelites said, Tell us how this awful thing happened. So the Levite, the husband of the murdered woman, said, I and my concubine came down to Gibeah in Benjamin to spend the night. 
During the night, the men of Gibeah came after me and surrounded the house intending to kill me. They raped my concubine and she died. I took my concubine, cut her into pieces and sent one piece into each region of Israel's inheritance because they committed this lewd and outrageous act in Israel. Now all you Israelites, speak up and tell me what you've decided to do. All of the men rose up together as one, saying, None of us will go home. No, not one of us will return to his house. But this is what we'll do to Gibeah. We'll go up against it in the order decided by lots. We'll take ten men out of every hundred from all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred from a thousand, and a thousand from ten thousand to get provision for the army. Then when the army arrives at Gibeah in Benjamin, it can give them what they deserve, for this is an outrageous act done in Israel. So all the Israelites got together and united as one against the city. The tribes of Israel sent messengers throughout the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What about this awful crime that was committed among you? Now turn these wicked men of Gibeah over to us, so that we may put them to death and purge the evil from Israel. But the Benjamites would not listen to their fellow Israelites. From their town they came together at Gibeah to fight against the Israelites. At once the Benjamites mobilized 26,000 swordsmen from their town, in addition to the 700 able young men from those living in Gibeah. Among all those soldiers, there were 700 select troops who were left-handed. Each of them could sling a stone at a hare and not miss. Israel, apart from Benjamin, mustered 400,000 swordsmen, all of them fit for battle. The Israelites went up to Bethel and inquired of God. They said, Who of us is to go out first to fight against the Benjaminites? The Lord replied, Judah shall go first. The next morning the Israelites got up and pitched camp near Gibeah. The Israelites went out to fight the Benjaminites and took up battle positions against them at Gibeah. The Benjamites came out of Gibeah and cut down 22,000 Israelites on the battlefield that day. But the Israelites encouraged one another and again took up their position where they had stationed themselves the first day. The Israelites went up and wept before the Lord until evening, and they inquired of the Lord. They said, Shall we go up to fight against the Benjamites, our fellow Israelites? The Lord answered, Go up against them. Then the Israelites draw near to Benjamin the second day. This time, when the Benjamites came out from Gibeah to oppose them, they cut down another 18,000 Israelites, all of them armed with swords. Then all the Israelites, the whole army went up to Bethel, and there they sat weeping before the Lord. They fasted that day until evening and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings to the Lord. And the Israelites inquired of the Lord. In those days the Ark of the Covenant of God was there, with Phinehas son of Eleazar the son of Aaron ministering before it. They asked, Shall we go up to fight against the Benjamites, our fellow Israelites, or not? The Lord responded, Go, for tomorrow I will give them into your hands. Then Israel set up an ambush around Gibeah. They went against the Benjamites on the third day and took up positions against Gibeah as they had done before. The Benjamites came out to meet them and were drawn away from the city. They began to inflict casualties on the Israelites as before, so that about thirty men fell in the open fields and on the roads, the one leading to Bethel and the other to Gibeah. While the Benjamites were saying, We are defeating them as before, the Israelites were saying, Let's retreat and draw them away from the city to the roads. All of the men of Israel moved from their places and took up positions at Baal Tamer, and the Israelite ambush charged out of its place on the west of Gibeah. Then ten thousand of Israel's able young men made a frontal attack on Gibeah. The fighting was so heavy that the Benjamites did not realize how near disaster was. The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel, and on that day the Israelites struck down 25,100 Benjamites, all armed with swords. Then the Benjamites saw that they were beaten. Now the men of Israel had given way before Benjamin because they relied on the ambush they had set near Gibeah. Those who had been in the ambush made a sudden dash into Gibeah, spread out and put the whole city to the sword. The Israelites had arranged with the ambush that they would send up a great cloud of smoke from the city and then the Israelites would counterattack. The Benjamites began to inflict casualties on the Israelites, about thirty, and they said, We are defeating them as in the first battle. But when the column of smoke began to rise from the city, the Benjamites turned and saw the whole city going up in smoke. 
Then the Benjamites counterattacked, and the Benjamites were terrified because they realized that the disaster had come upon them. So they fled before the Israelites in the direction of the wilderness, but they could not escape the battle. And the Israelites who had come out of the towns cut them down there. They surrounded the Benjamites, chased them, and easily overran them in the vicinity of Gibeah on the east. 18,000 Benjamites fell, all of them valiant fighters. As they turned and fled towards the wilderness to the rock of Rimon, the Israelites cut down 5,000 men along the roads. They kept pressing after the Benjamites as far as Gidom and struck down 2,000 more. On that day, 25,000 Benjamite swordsmen fell, all of them valiant fighters. But 600 of them turned and fled into the wilderness to the rock of Rimon where they stayed four months. The men of Israel went back to Benjamin and put all the towns to the sword, including the animals and everything else they found. All the towns they came across they set to fire. The men of Israel had taken an oath at Mizpah. Not one of us will give his daughter in marriage to Benjamite. The people went to Bethel, where they sat before God until evening, raising their voices and weeping bitterly. Lord, God of Israel, they cried, Why has this happened to Israel? Why should one tribe be missing from Israel today? Early the next day, the people built an altar and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Israelites asked, Who from all the tribe of Israel has failed to assemble before the Lord? For they had taken a solemn oath that anyone who failed to assemble before the Lord at Mizpah was to be put to death. Now the Israelites grieved for the tribe of Benjamin, their fellow Israelites. Today one tribe is cut off from Israel, they said. How can we provide wives for those who are left, since we have undertaken an oath by the Lord not to give them any of our daughters in marriage? Then they asked, Which one of the tribes of Israel failed to assemble before the Lord of Mizpah? They discovered that no one from Jabesh Gilead had come to the camp for the assembly. For when they counted the people, they found that none of the people of Jabesh Gilead were there. So the assembly sent 12,000 fighting men with instructions to go to Jabbath Gilead and put to the sword those living there, including the women and children. This is what you are to do, they said. Kill every male and every woman who is not a virgin. They found among the people living in Jabesh Gilead 400 young women who had never slept with a man, and they took them to the camp at Shiloh in Canaan. Then the whole assembly sent an offer of peace to the Benjamites at the Rock of Birman, So the Benjamites returned at that time and were given the women of Jabesh Gilead who had been spared. But there was not enough for them all. The people grieved for Benjamin because the Lord had made a gap in the tribes of Israel. And the elders of the assembly said, With the women of Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjaminite survivors must have heirs, they said, so that a tribe of Israel will not be wiped out. We can't give them our daughters as wives since we Israelites have taken this oath. Cursed be anyone who gives a wife to a Benjamite. But look, there is an annual festival in the law of the Lord in Shiloh, which lies north of Bethel, east of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem, to the south of Lebanon. They instructed the Benjamites, saying, Go hide in the vineyards, and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards, and each one of you shall seize one of them to be your wife. Then return to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers complain to us, we will say to them, Do us the favor of helping them, because we did not get wives for them during the war. You will not be guilty of breaking your oath because you did not give your daughters to them. So that is what the Benjamites did. While the young women were dancing, each man caught one and carried off to be his wife. Then they returned to their inheritance and rebuilt the towns and settled in them. At that time, the Israelites left that place and went home to their tribes and clans, each to his own inheritance. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. Romans 8 Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. From what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to the death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, because His Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. What shall set us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Proverbs 19 Better the poor, whose walk is blameless, than the fool, whose lips are perverse. 
Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? A person's own folly leads to their ruins, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Wealth attracts many friends, but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. The poor are shunned by all their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Though the poor pursue them without pleading, they are nowhere to be found. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. It's not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes? A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep, and the shiftless go hungry. Whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and He will reward them for what they have done. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. A hot-tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them, and you'll have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept discipline, and at the end you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love, better to be poor than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He would not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker, and the simple learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning, and they will gain knowledge. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Stop listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A corrupt witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers, and beatings for the backs of fools. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of some troubling scripture, I'll admit, some really dark scripture that may have caught our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
Before we say our prayers for the day and the time of the year, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. Check the show notes for all the contact details. And I've got a friend of mine, Christina, who's been asking for prayer for her nephew. Um, and I think we've mentioned her before. But if we can still keep them in prayer, they've had some very bad news recently. Let's pray. Good morning, God. You are ushering in another day, untouched and freshly new. So here I am to ask you, God, if you'll renew me too. Forgive the many errors that I made yesterday, and let me try to again, dear God, to walk closer in your way. But Lord, I'm well aware I can't make it on my own. So take my hand and hold it tight, for I cannot walk alone. Our prayer for the time of the year. Ever-living God, we hold before you the older people with whom we work in our church. Bless their homes and help them to know churches as their spiritual home. Help us to recognize the particular needs of those in their latter years. Make us diligent in care. And let us acknowledge well the gifts, experience and wisdom that come with age. How best to embrace change with a welcoming smile. Father, may our hearts beat as one with you in mission, ministry, and worship. In the name of your Spirit we ask. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us, now and forevermore. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the prayers. And if you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information about the podcast or myself, head to rayborrett.co.uk and you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. You can also listen to us on TuneIn, YouTube and now we are on radio.com. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.